what part of living the history, I mean, they became, I mean, part of the change that was happening yeah. in But you, did you know at that time what you were doing? Did you know that it's how big this was? I had no idea. You know, like I said, I was just, I was just glad that I was there. I ain't, I wasn't even thinking about what the heck I was doing. You know, it was just, it was just like when, um, when uh, I hooked up with Bernie. Now. I didn't know what the heck I was. I was just glad to be there. You know, um, and uh, I don't know. It's just that's I always kind of carried that one. You know, and that one been my guide. You know, uh, just glad to be there. You know, because um, you know to be with George Clinton, to be with. James Brown, you know, to be with Bernie. I mean, you know, you know, and I'm right off the street looking real crazy, you know. So um, I don't know. I kept those things like those were the things that kept me motivated. You know, Fred Wesley, Macy Park. I mean, you know, that kind of you know, those are like the cats, you know. So that kept me motivated, you know. Probably. Um, almost all of it uh, oh Larry Graham yeah Larry Graham um, we used to go out to his house Bernie myself you know and and just jam with him you know when we used to play Oakland San Francisco and uh, I mean you know everybody kind of start trying to take the credit but no it was Larry Graham it was definitely Larry Graham um, he was doing with the bass what uh, at that particular time what nobody else was even thinking about you know and once everybody well popping and you know, you know, that kind of plucking style. I mean, I, I would say, I would have to say he was the first one I heard doing it, you know, and I would have to even go to, as far as to say he was probably the only one that was doing it, you know. So um, between him and Sly, because Sly kind of, yeah, Sly kind of was doing it a little bit, but Larry was even, you know, he was more, you know, more on it. So, um, yeah, I would, I would have to get that one to Larry. Yeah, definitely. Are there any other, um, especially of the time, funky bass players that you were Uh, at that time, um, at that time, I think Lewis probably came up about the same time I was coming up. So Lewis Johnson of the uh, Brothers Johnson, and they were kind of touring with us. So I would, I would, I would have to give it to Larry because Larry was the first one, you know, and all of us that came up after that was like. Um, you know, deal with it what we did with it. But I would have to give it to Larry. I mean, Lewis was bad too, but Larry was the one. Larry was the first one, I think, you know. So I would have to give it all to Larry. Yeah. Larry was the trunk of the trees that came. Yeah, everybody else came, you know, after that. Turn to the other groups, like, um, like the Bob Mm-hmm. Oh, I thought it was cool for them. I mean, you know, it was it was a space for that. I mean, you know, we wasn't trying to hog, you know, like if it wasn't what we was doing, it, it ain't happening. You know, everybody kind of had a space at that time, and I think it all played a major role, you know. Uh, cool, we used to do shows with us all the time. Yeah, we used to you know, sure. you know, I mean, you know, so it wasn't like, you know, just because we was doing this, your stuff don't mean nothing. You know, no, everybody had their space, you know. Uh, we just knew there wasn't nobody doing what we were doing, you know, and... Um, and we left it like that, you know, because uh, we we loved our space, you know, and we gave everybody else theirs, you know, so it wasn't no thing. In terms of, in terms of, I guess they're, in the sense, they're places in the history of this music, what's the most important thing that you learned from the music? Oh, man, oh, I think, brother, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, they were they were from uh, Cincinnati, Oh Ohio. And, and they also... Jimi Hendrix also played with that. Right, right, right. See, so, so it was all connection kind of the, connection there. Yeah. Related, so, connected. And they, as a matter of fact, they used to, um, they used to record over at Kings also. You know, um, that's probably where I first ran into them at. And I don't know. It was just they saw. I mean, Ronnie I that boy could yeah. sing his head off. You know, and you know, even today, I would think that he's probably. The ma one of the major ones of that old school that still got his, I mean, he still got it going on. They just sold you know? out um, the Beacon Theater in New York. Yeah, yeah. It's quiet because we're not right, right, you know, doesn't need a lot of volume. Yeah, yeah. Mixed with Clive, the audience loves it. Oh, yeah. They're over, yeah. They, uh, they're over in England now, or they just left. Yeah. And when I say the 
Ohio player. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Sugar. Well, you know what? All of them. You we know, big family. It was, it was like, God, Ohio players. Because, see, they were really close because they were like, uh, they were right there, too. You know, Cincinnati, Ohio. It was like, uh, uh, they played this club called Bay. And, you know, we were just coming on the scene. See, the Ohio players were, like, hidden. I mean, them suckers was hidden. It wasn't even like, we knew the Ohio players before they started getting records and before they, the people say they were happening. We knew them when they were really happening, okay? And this was when they would come to the shows and all the bands from all around. Forget, I mean, you know, there's like the normal people. No, the front rows were lined with nothing but musicians, okay? Sitting there doing this. Checking it out. Checking the show, you know, checking the show because them boys were so bad, so bad. They had Marshall playing the bass. Like, uh oh, whoops, wow, sorry. Marshall was playing the bass like this, and they was all styling, you know. As a matter of fact, I forgot about Marshall. I'm sorry, Marshall. I'm sorry, brother. Uh, Marshall was another one, you know, that uh, I got a, um, a good idea, like a style. I mean, the mug used to, the way they used to stand, Marshall would, Marshall would t stand, and he would take his bass, and I mean, you know, the mug, we used to stand, and they would play, he would play like this. And I mean, it was like, man, these guys, you know. And then Sugar had his thing, you know. Um, them cats were so stylish, you know. And then Dutch Robinson, he was oh, like the Dutch singer. I mean, and, I mean, and this was before the record. See, the people never got to see them the way I seen them. Them mugs were so bad. But when they got the records, you know, it started getting a whole nother thing. But I can understand why they were happening with the records. But the people never got the chance to see the real Ohio players. Because the Ohio players... They had everybody like, couldn't believe it, man. They were right next to James Brown. They were, they were the ones. They were the ones. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know. I, I got kind of hyped when you said Ohio player, you know, because um, Sugarfoot spent a lot of time with me, you know, because um, you know when you're a kid coming up, you know, you know the older dudes are like, uh, get that boy out of here, you know. And my brother did me the same way. Uh, love him to death, you know, but, you know, everybody would, would um, when you're young, you know, and you're trying, you're really trying to get something going on, must always give you that thing, you know, and, but to me, it made me more determined, you know, and the ones that I could lock in on, like Sugarfoot, he would drag me in, yeah, come here, check this out, Bruce, you know, spend a little time with me, I said, thanks, man, I really, and they, go ahead, kid, rub me on the head, you know, it'd be cool, you know. made a difference. Are we on? Oh, okay. Speaking about the book for so long and how that developed, you know, I mean, who is the Star Child? Well, Star Child is actually, George came up with that one, I would say, when you think? Yeah. You know, uh, the Star Child, yeah, I, I guess. You talked about Casper. Yeah, yeah. And Casper and. Um, the, well, well, Star Child, I think, evolved from. Uh, um, you know, me wearing the glasses and coming in with the stars and, and you know, one thing led to another. I think uh, Star Child kind of evolved from that, you know, and... But, you know, I remember reading that you were... When you left James, you had your own man, and you were home, and you kept you Yeah. Yeah. Can you tell us the story you mean why you kept hearing the story of Funk? No, no, I just want to hear you tell us about how, when you were touring, you kept hearing about this other thing. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Chasing them to find them. Yes, the yes, well, yes, well, 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 I remember well. that. No, it was, um, um, you know, after we left James, yeah, yeah. After we had left James, you know, um, we really didn't know what the heck we were doing, what we were going to do, because, like, after two weeks, you know, we ran out of money. It was like, okay, all right. Mr. Boots, uh, since you're on it and everything, what we gonna do now? You know, so we were looking pretty crazy. Uh, then we start um, doing gigs, you know, trying to get gigs and, you know, promoting our own gigs and, you know, going to different towns, telling them, you know, we the house guests, you know, formerly James Brown band. You know, and everybody was excited because we was, they knew we were with James Brown because they had seen us and they'd heard about us and we were fresh kids, you know, so it was like, yeah, yeah. So everybody would give us a shot, you know. But they would always give us a door because nobody want to actually pay us, you know. 
So uh, we would take the door, be selling out, you know, looking good, looking groovy, and the people were getting blown away because we were wearing stuff that we found out, you know, by being over in Europe with James. We kind of brought back like hot pants and fur chains and long boots and, you know, and, you know, we didn't figure nobody was doing this in the States, you know, because we didn't know, we had, we didn't know nothing about Funkadelic, you know, and then we started doing uh, road gigs and um, we kept hearing this thing about, man, y'all should see Funkadelic, you know, because y'all look like Funkadelic, y'all should play on the same stage with Funkadelic, then it kept saying that to us, it's like, yeah, okay. Where is Funkadelic? We want to get, you know, we want to get on the stage with them. Yeah, who is Funkadelic? So we kept hearing this, you know, everywhere we played. Y'all just missed Funkadelic. They was here last week. You know, it's like, God, we getting closer and closer. So we kept getting closer and closer. We said, in a minute, we're going to catch up with these mugs, you know. And then we're going to see who the real band is, right? <laughs> so. Oh, you did, huh? That's what we were oh, saying. No, that's what we were saying. Aww. Oh. <laughs> 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 That's only a 10 minute tape. Film is 10 minutes. Yeah, film is 10 minutes. Oh. Just think we had a battery with that. Oh, okay. Okay. Now we're up. Okay. Stupid kids. Okay. God, Doug. But that way. Roll 20, take 8. Okay. Good. Good. Oh. Okay. <laughs> So every you got away and you just yeah, we were, we were just missing Bernie. Bernie, I, I was seeing his coattail fly out the door as we were coming in. I was like, yeah, Duncan, we missed him again. So, um, you know, something happened and we got up in Detroit because um, the people were telling us to just go to Detroit. Funkadelic pretty much stay there, you know, and you get a chance to meet him and maybe y'all can hook up, do some records or do something, you know. So we got excited about that. We go to Detroit. And, uh, you know, couldn't find them. Couldn't find them nowhere. So uh, um, somebody was telling us about going over to Motown Records to see about getting a, a record deal or talk to somebody about, you know, getting a record or something. So by us, you know, we didn't, we didn't know nobody over to Motown, you know. All I knew was James Jameson. I wanted to meet James Jameson, you know. So it was like, okay. So all of us crazy looking dudes, right? We go over to Motown, all right? We walk in and they got this doorway where you walk in and they got a camera on you. You don't get let in unless you know somebody you're coming to see, you got an appointment by, we walk in, see, we don't know none of this. All we know is, I want to meet James Jameson and we got an idea for a record, right? So we walk in, they say, all right, uh, who would y'all like to see? We hear this over the loudspeaker. We ain't seen nobody yet. You just standing in this hallway and they got the camera on you, you know, going back and forth. Like, okay, all right. So they say, who y'all want to see? And then we looking at each other like, Jameson. Yeah, James, I'd like to meet him because we got this record. And uh, that, as I was saying that and explaining it to him, security guards came out, grabbed us, and escorted us right the heck out of there and said, boys, if y'all don't get out of here, okay, we were hurt. We were very, we were very hurt. Maybe very sad. Maybe very sad. But at the same time, I said, thank you, Lord. Whatever's happening, you know, is for the best. I mean, you know, so we just, you know, every time something like that happened to us, we kick our boots off, go try something else. We found a gig at this um, this club called the Love Club. It was a new club there, and they were trying to, um, the new stuff with the new kids. You know, they wasn't selling alcohol. It was like uh, Kool-Aid, fruit juice, and, you know, had all the kids in there. So we wanted to play in there. It was a bunch of bands playing there. We said, God, dog it, hopefully Funkadelic will be down here. We'll get a chance, of, you know. So um, no Funkadelic. Funkadelic was too big for that, you know. It was like, because uh, they were playing like colleges, and they were getting paid, you know. And, uh, you know, we wasn't doing nothing. We was just, you know, so we said, God, we got to find fucking dog. So we played this club. We was hoping that the word would get around that we were there. And, um, and that maybe, you know, these, these, these uh, cats here, like these, these heroes of ours, would be around and say, yeah, well, come on, you know. You know, we were hoping about that, but nobody never showed up. We started getting a rap around Detroit that, you know, house guests, these boys are bad, y'all got to go see. We started getting that rap. We started getting gigs. But as far as record companies and as far as, you know, Funkadelic, None of that. So we finally ran into this girl, um, Molly Franklin. Yes. Yes, yes. And uh, she is the one, I think, that really um, set things rolling, you know, because, um, you know, she let us stay over our house because we didn't have no, you know, they had to start throwing us out of the hotels. All of us in one room. It was about, what, eight of us, 
staying in one room and then the hotel bill got ready to get paid we'd have to run you know so it was kind of deep you know and um so she let us stay with her and her mama they let us stay up over the storefront so we stayed there a few weeks trying to get it going on and we finally she said yeah i gotta take y'all to meet george Clinton." you know that's pretty much you know that did it that that did it so Said, yeah, take me over there. I gotta meet this mug, you know, because he had like the, the ball head and stuff. I gotta meet this mug. Everybody been telling me about it, you know. So, um, you know, finally uh, she took us over there, and uh, sure enough, George was sitting over in the corner, had his uh, white sheet on, had his bare feet crossed, bare, bare feet. He's sitting in his uh, what do you call that position? Uh, uh, with his legs crossed, and you know, that, that kind of thing. He's sitting there, had his head down. He's probably, um, uh, he wasn't home up here. He was definitely not home. So, uh, and uh, I think I probably wasn't home either, come to think of it. But, um, you know, uh, it was good, though, because as soon as I seen him, it was like love at first bite, right? It was like, yeah, I know. And I mean, home. yeah, yeah, we were home. definitely home. It was like, I know I can do what I want to do. And he'd seen it, too. So it was like, yeah, yeah. And then after we talked and hooked up, then I got a chance to meet Bernie, you know, and that was like... Yeah, at the club, um, psychedelic gray, you know, and then that was love at first bite. So it was like, yeah, yeah you know, whatever we got to do, this is it, you know. So that's pretty much the way it worked. You know. Well, how did you keep from? You were boosting the goal. Yeah. You didn't. You didn't work. Um, you didn't just become another. Right. Well, I think that kind of started just in school anyway. I always, you know, people were laughing at me. And I, I think I, I grew up with a immune to the criticisms that, you know, you should look like everybody else. You know, I learned early that um, I'm going to dress the way I want to dress. I don't care what you think. You start laughing, I'm going to start laughing too. You know, so I learned early that it didn't matter what you thought the way I look or oh, I got some cheap shoes on because that's all I could afford you know I mean that's all my mama got me you know and if you laugh and then you know I mean you know I got you know I got in a few fights at first about it but after I learned that that was what was going to be happening it kind of stuck with me that you know straight yeah yeah how would you compare the atmosphere around you know around the world Oh, oh, uh -huh. <laughs> it's it's a total different, you know. It's a what would you say? They, like they, James was uh, uh, what's the word? More organized, more you know, tight, organized, organized, organized uh, discipline. Yeah, discipline. Yeah, yeah. Of uh, we were wild and crazy yeah, guys. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and it was two different one, you know, one extreme to the other. You, you know, know it's, it's a variation thereof. Like I was telling you. Yeah. You know, you know, as far as James being strict and everything, I kind of welcomed it because I needed it because uh, where I came from, I only had my mama there, and I needed a daddy figure, you know, a father figure, and I knew it, you know, and um, I was getting away with murder, you know, and I knew it, you know, so when I got with James. I was kind of welcoming. Whatever he had to discipline me on, I was kind of welcoming. And everybody else was talking about, man, that mother, man. But I was kind of, you know, because I knew I needed something. I didn't know what it was. If you look at it, it's just helped him yeah. do what he's been yeah. doing since. Yeah, Thank since God. then. You know, you know, and I didn't know what the heck was happening, but I knew I needed whatever he was saying and whatever he was doing, I needed it. You know, because I didn't, I didn't, you know, Mama did what she could do, but you know, I needed that man thing. You know, and it's a it's a it's a big difference. You know, so when I got with James, that that uh, and plus he treated me like his son. He call, always called me his son. You know, so uh, all that helped. You know, it, it helped build you know build my morale and I guess what do you call you? Yeah. Preparing for, for for what what he's doing to us today. <laughs> so you know, it was it was all good. You know, it was all good. Huh? We gotta go play. Okay. <laughs> Just one, thing. Okay. Um, one last question, uh -huh. and then I need you to say your name. 
Okay, okay. And that's about the thing. Yeah. Well, I think about Boosie Rubber Band, I think that was m probably more of, a, of my personal, you know, more of where I was really at. And um, at that time, I, as, you know, the generation that I was dealing with, was that was where I was at, you know. And um, I loved it because um, what I was doing was, you know, it's just it's just like any something other. Can relate to yeah, something they can relate to. You know. Radio that you I don't know. I you know, I can't say where it came from, but it's you know, it's just uh, I don't know. You pick up different things, and, you know, you know, it's just uh, it's kind of built in there. Yeah. And Bernie Warrell, uh, alias BW. We are the two musicians from State. I mean, not Elliot, but Space. And we are here to funk you up. Illegal aliens. Yes. Okay. Illegal aliens. Illegal aliens. Bootzilla's here, along with Bernie Worrell, B.W. <laughs> Did that make any sense at all?